North Korean troops, including soldiers from the elite 11th Army Corps, known as the Assault Corps, were sent to Russia last week, according to South Korean intelligence. As the Washington Post reports, North Korea's special forces are equipped with explosives, chemical and biological agents, parachutes and aircraft, although their gear is inferior to that of other countries, according to a 2021 report by the U.S. Defense Intelligence Agency. The North Korean special forces number more than 200,000 in total. These elite units are trained for both potential attacks on South Korea and defense against external threats. They include ground, sea and air forces that operate in reconnaissance, sniper and sabotage groups. They are trained to capture key figures and carry out surprise attacks, according to the U.S. Department of Defense. These troops have been involved in some of North Korea's most famous operations, including the 1968 raid on Seoul, which resulted in casualties on both sides. The special forces are widely publicized in North Korean state media, where they are often portrayed as the strongest soldiers, sometimes with an emphasis on physical fitness. But despite their high level of training, these soldiers may struggle to adapt to modern warfare. As Hyuns Lee, a former soldier and human rights activist who served in the Stormtroopers, points out they lack the skills to handle advanced technology and modern equipment. If they end up on the front lines, they will have to contend with Ukrainian forces equipped with drones and missiles they have never encountered before. Lee added that for many of the soldiers sent to Russia, this would be their first encounter with combat and the outside world. He called them victims of a cruel deal between Kim Jong-un and Putin, noting that they would be facing real combat for the first time, ill-prepared and scared. Kim yol Su, a senior security expert at the Korea Institute of Defense Studies in Seoul, suggested that engineering and support units could also be sent to Russia to support the elite troops, including logistics, transportation and combat support. He noted that tens of thousands of troops require resources such as food, shelter, ammunition and communications. Despite their narrow specialization, North Korean special forces will likely assist in combat operations and learn from the Russian military, Kim added. A former Kremlin official who maintains ties to government circles said the deployment of North Korean troops to Kursk was an act of revenge for what the Kremlin sees as a threat to escalation. He also noted that it is cheaper and politically easier for the Kremlin to deploy North Korean troops as it gives the DPRK much needed resources and combat experience. Finland's president said North Korea's dispatch of troops to Russia represents an escalation of the Russia-Ukraine war that goes against China's own stated position on the conflict, following talks Tuesday with the Chinese president. Alexander Stubb made his comments after meeting for more than three hours with China's president Xi Jinping in Beijing in a visit to discuss the war as well as trade and other issues. Chinese officials did not comment on specifics, but Chinese state media said the two sides had an in-depth exchange. North Korean activity right now, both in terms of arms exports and especially in terms of sending troops to Russia is escalation, expansion and provocation, Stubb said. The US government on Monday said that North Korea has sent 10,000 troops to Russia where they are believed to be headed for the Kursk border region where Ukrainian troops have seized Russian territory. Stubb said that deployment defies China's position that there should be no escalation, no expansion and no provocation on the battlefield. China and Brazil issued a joint peace plan earlier this year that calls for no expansion of the battlefield. The Finnish leader also said that China should continue its efforts in pushing for peace in Ukraine, and that the starting point should be Ukraine's peace plan. He also expressed concerns that Russian President Vladimir Putin could deploy nuclear weapons in the course of war. It's extremely important that a major power such as China keeps on having dialogue with Russia and make sure that we can de-escalate as much as possible, Stubb said. Xi, for his part, expressed China's willingness to work with all parties concerned, including Finland, to continue to play an active role in promoting a peaceful resolution of the crisis, according to state CCTV. Stubb and she previously had met 14 years ago, the Chinese leader noted in his welcome remarks before their meeting. They had met when Stubb was Finland's foreign minister and she was China's vice president.
North Korean activity right now, both in terms of arms exports and especially in terms of sending troops to China is, sorry, to Russia, is escalation, expansion and provocation. Uh, so we had a good discussion uh, about this. My own analysis is, this is my analysis, not the words of the president, is that for China, the Chinese-North Korea relationship is not very comfortable at the moment. Uh, because as a matter of fact, it can lead to escalation. China's relationship with Russia, I respect the autonomy of both sides, has a direct effect on China's relationship with Europe. So if we feel that Russia's aggressivity in Ukraine is a threat to us, then it has ramifications for anyone who directly or indirectly uh, supports uh, Russia. Uh, The final and fifth point uh, I made is that it is very difficult to trust President Putin, especially when it comes to nuclear weapons. Uh, and that's why it's extremely important that a major power uh, such as China uh, keeps on having dialogue with Russia and make sure that we can de-escalate as much as possible. Chinese-Russian relations has an impact on Chinese-European relations. And for China, the biggest internal market in the world is the European Union. So my worry is that we're going into a cycle of tariffs, of trade escalation, etc., etc. We need to avoid that. We need to have a level playing field. Um, and, and this is the ongoing negotiation. Difficult situation on the east because they have a lot of people, a lot of people really, I mean Russians, and they don't think for them it's it's not people, I mean, that. so they push them and uh, a lot of Russians are killed each day. So last my connection with the general was today morning and uh, yesterday, for example, Russian, they lost only on, on this, on the east direction, they lost uh, 800 people been killed. So they don't think about it. We have to think, that's why it's not simple. That's why we think first of all about people and then about the land. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Best of luck. Good to see you. Bye.